I'm a big fan of labs that really engage the students, get them thinking, but also forcing them, the, the labs that force them to really make a prediction. I call these target labs, and here's a nice little density target lab. Density can be a rather dry subject, and uh, a lab that uh, can come along that forces them to make a prediction and then grades them on the accuracy of that prediction is, is got to be a winner. So here's the trick on this. They've just done some density calculations, maybe even did some lab activity where they weighed an empty graduated cylinder, put a liquid in it, weighed it again, determined the density, maybe identified what the solution was. In this one, they're not allowed to weigh the empty cylinder. And I've actually stuck a little piece of uh, putty on this cylinder just to uh, make it so each cylinder in the classroom with different amounts of putty will have a different weight. And that's their target to figure out how much the empty cylinder weighs. So they're not allowed to weigh it empty. And you're saying, what's going to keep them doing that when I'm not looking? Well, the electronic balances I have out in the room are all up at the main desk. I've got three of them out. That's all you need for this. If you just have one of them, there'd be a bottleneck there. But if you have three of them and you tell the students to keep going to the same one, not to switch balances in the middle of their lab, they'll get fine results. So you're keeping an eye out the, at the main desk and um, making sure they're not cheating by weighing it empty. So here's what this lab would look like. They're instructed to pour some liquid. And I happen to have here some 15% salt solution that I've colored green. They don't know that. They just know it's a solution. Um, and um, th they're instructed to pour out 10 to 15 milliliters of the solution into the, flat, into the graduated cylinder. OK? So I'll get an eye, eye level reading here. That's, I'm going to call that 19.0. Maybe I can turn it to you. You can zoom in on that and see that's about 19.0. And there's another nice one that's back there. They're going to be doing some graphing skills on this. And you can either do it on the computer or by hand or both. And I'll talk about that. So they never weighed the empty cylinder. We have 19.0 for the initial volume. And I'm going to put that here on the, on the scale. And I know it's not directed at you, but I'm going to tell you 69.00 grams. OK? So I'm going to enter that here on the little spreadsheet I've got. Um, I've got this all set up in an Excel spreadsheet. And we said the volume was 19.0. The 0, .0 won't really make a difference. It's going to disappear as soon as I do that. And this is, actually, it says 69.01. So I'll enter that 69.01. OK. And now we're going to go to our next data line. They take that back. They could empty it back into the, the solution, but I think it's just easier just to add some more. Add another 15 to 20. OK. I'll turn that toward you as I get an eyeball reading there of, I'm thinking 32.1, 32.1. OK, so we have a volume of 32.1, and our mass is 84.21. I'm going to enter those in my table here. Volume 32.1, and the uh, oh, 84.22, it says now. And the scales. That's common for them to uh, vary a little bit there on that last digit. A lot of students think that if it's digital, it's automatically exactly that. And of course, it's not. The last digit on a scale is just as imprecise as the last digit I get off of reading a graduated cylinder. Let's do a couple more of these, another 15 to 20. OK. I'm going to call that 48.5. 48.5. Might as well enter that right now, 48.5. Put it on my balance here, 103.74, 103.74. And um, we're getting a nice little relationship here, yeah? And we're going to add, I'll just do a little bit more. One more point. I'm not going to go past 60, though, so this will be a little close point. That's fine. OK. And um, I'm looking at 50, well, it looks like 58 even to me, 58.0, 58.0. And on the balance, I'm getting 114.95. OK. Now, what do they do with this? They are required to. Actually, I have them print off their graph. If they've done it on the spreadsheet, they print it off. And then they draw a best fit line. And they're trying to figure out 
what the empty graduated cylinder weighs. So this forces them to graph data, take careful measurements. That's the other thing about target labs. The students always measure very, very carefully. They know their grade depends on it. If any of these measurements were taken wrong and their data is off, their final answer is going to be off. Everything has to be in place for this to work. So um, I'll show you on here. There it is, add trend lines. That's what I was looking for. Okay, it's going to add a trend line, and I can do better than that. Um, let's see, my lowest volume was 19, so I'm going to have it extend this backwards 19. <coughs> so that'll get it right back to the axis for me. And I'm also going to have it display an equation on the chart, which is a great little thing here. Okay, so it's extrapolated backwards, and it has Look at how nice the data is, too. Well, of course it should be. What is this? It's showing us the density is a constant for all these, right? As the mass increased, the volume, I'm sorry, as the volume increased, the mass increased proportionately. But what they have to figure out is to figure out how much that empty cylinder weighs. I remember, that's the target. Actually, there are three targets in this. This is the first one, the empty cylinder. To figure out how much it weighs, they have to extrapolate that line backwards. That's a good word, extrapolate. I want for them to know. And see what it should weigh, if this pattern continues, completely empty. So that is the y-intercept. So they can either read off the graph like this, where they, you know, they print it off, or right there from the data. So 46.50. Now, it's not going to be that precise, but we'll see. Now, if they came up to me with this, said, OK, we're ready to try it, and they have it written down. It has to be written down. Our prediction is 46.5 grams. Then um, you might question, about, question this, right? You see what they've got here? some little drops. In a normal lab, uh, who cares? But their, rate, their grade depends on it. So you better believe they're in there with paper towels trying to get that all dried out and stuff, or they'll shake it out like this. Okay, so let's see how we've got it. And um, I give them a range, by the way. There's these scales, all these things have an error within them. And the range is about 0.5 either way. And I'm getting, with the droplets, I should probably dry it out a little bit more, 47.02. So we're within a half a gram. That's pretty good, given this kind of level of precision. That would give them full credit for it, within half a gram. Okay, that's, that's number one uh, target. The second one, predict how much it would weigh if there were, and then I have some value written down on that lab sheet, um, 45 milliliters, something that's not one of the data points they're likely to get. Um, or I'll say on this one, 35. 35 milliliters of solution in there. So, they go ahead and pour out. They have to do two things correctly here. 35, and this is an example of interpolation. And also, now they're not just pouring any random amount. They want to get exactly 35 in there. And, well, that's pretty darn close. Okay. And then they go to their graph, and they have this printed out so they can use a ruler. And now they have to figure out how to read this. So, 35 up to the line and over, they're thinking maybe 88 grams, okay? So they're reading the graph. I mean, there was the one target was to figure out how much it would weigh empty. Now it's to figure out how much it would weigh with 35 milliliters in there, up, over, and over. We'll say 88 grams. I'll place this on there. I'll be honest. It weighs 87.14 grams. So that's a little bit off, but again, I don't have this printed off in front of me. And the third target is this. How much liquid would you have to put in to have it weigh exactly 100.00 grams? Now that sounds just like the previous target, but it's actually flipped. Okay? How much liquid do we have to put in? And this is an easy target because it's easy for me to grade in this regard. They go now, instead of starting over here and saying, okay, 35 up and over, they go to 100 over the graph and down. And on this best fit line, it looks like it's just a tad bit above the 45. So my objective now is to put just a tad over 45 in. And they have little pipe pets to get it just right. Okay, so that's just a little bit over 45. And now they don't have to show me a number when they come up. Now when they come up to be scored on their target, I'm just looking at this thing weighing 100. And of course, just different students with different amount of putty here 
All these targets will be different. This will be a different amount of liquid for a different group. So let's see how close I came here. And 99.42, not bad, okay? So it's a nice little activity. It's got three targets built into one. It has a lot of graph analysis. It drives home the idea of density. After that, by the way, we talk about the slope of this line and what that means. And of course, the slope of that line is density. We then take another liquid and do the um, whole thing over again with that in the same graduate. And what ends up happening is they get, I use, for instance, salt water for one and maybe ethanol for the other. And you get dots that are below, form a line that has a lower slope, but it still intersects at the same spot there because, of course, the empty cylinder weighs the same. So there's lots of room for, for extending this, and it's a, it's a nice one. I really believe in these target labs, and it's a nice one for driving home the idea of density. Thank you.